Hello and welcome to Lakeland Baptist Church Online Good Friday service. I'm Pastor Brian and I want to thank you for making time to join us for this service to contemplate the death of Jesus Christ. Will you join me in prayer right there where you are? Father, as we come into your presence, we want to thank you today for the opportunity to connect online with others and contemplate the death of Christ on the cross. Lord, as we open this service, we open our hearts to receive from you and to be touched in a new way, a fresh way by the thought that Jesus, the just, gave his life for us, the unjust, that he might bring us to God. Lord, thank you so much today for loving the world like you do. Thank you for given us this moment of silence in the world to contemplate the most important thing that matters right now, Jesus. Work in our hearts today, and we'll be grateful to praise you for all that's accomplished. In Jesus' name, amen. <music> Good
Maslam. Jesus Christ, 33, of Nazareth, died Friday on Mount Calvary, also known as Golgotha, the place of the skull. Betrayed by the apostle Judas, Jesus was crucified by the Romans by the order of Pontius Pilate. The cause of death was crucifixion, extreme exhaustion, severe torture, and loss of blood. Jesus Christ, a descendant of Abraham, was a member of the house of David. He was the son of the late Joseph, a carpenter of Nazareth, and Mary, his devoted mother. Jesus was born in a stable in the city of Bethlehem, Judea. He is survived by his mother, Mary, his faithful apostles, numerous disciples, and many other followers. Jesus was self-educated and spent most of his adult life working as a teacher. Jesus also occasionally worked as a medical doctor and it is reported that he healed many patients. Up until the time of his death, Jesus was teaching and sharing the good news, healing the sick, touching the lonely, feeding the hungry and helping the poor. Jesus was most noted for telling parables about his father's kingdom and performing miracles such as feeding over 5,000 people with only five loaves of bread and two fish and healing a man who was born blind. On the day before his death, he held a last supper celebrating the Passover feast at which he foretold his death. The body was quickly buried in a stone grave, which was donated by Joseph of Arimathea, a loyal friend of the family. By order of Pontius Pilate, a boulder was rolled in front of the tomb. Roman soldiers were put on guard.
you to see the Savior with me today in Isaiah chapter number 53. We look in our Bibles today at verse number 3. The Bible says he is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shears is dumb, so Jesus openeth not his mouth. I want you to see the Savior with me for the next couple of minutes. Jesus is the man of sorrows. He is the smitten redeemer, the one who comes bringing peace to all who believe, the one who carries the sins of straying sheep. I want us to note the character of Christ in verse number seven, his discipline under oppression, his control during the pressure of the cross. The silence of Christ proclaimed his strength. Christ was silent, the Bible says, when he was oppressed. He was oppressed in verse number seven, and he opened not his mouth. Christ was silent when he was oppressed. He was arrested, though innocent. He was sold by Judas for 30 pieces of silver. He was betrayed with a kiss. He was falsely accused but he held his peace. He was silent when his followers failed him. They forsook him and fled. Peter denied him three times. He was silent before Pilate. When Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? He would not even as much as speak before Pilate. Compare this to the silence of ours when we are oppressed. I don't know about you, but I struggle with oppression. I struggle with going through difficulties and, and oppression in my life, and, and I struggle with being silent during that. Jesus gives us a great example of character in his uh, uh, silence of, uh, when oppressed. Christ was also silent when he was afflicted. The Bible says in verse 7, he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was silent when he was scourged. He was silent when mocked by the soldiers. He was crowned with a crown of thorns and they placed a reed in his hand. They bowed before him and yelled, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him. They struck him. They gambled for his garments. and He was silent. He was silent when he was mocked by the crowd. Paul's description of his silence in Philippians chapter 2. The Bible said he made himself of no reputation. He humbled himself, Paul said, and he became obedient unto death. What an example for us Jesus set when we are afflicted to be silent in affliction. Christ was the silent lamb. As a lamb to the slaughter, Isaiah looks back to the Passover in Exodus chapter 12 when they had one lamb for one family and they wiped the blood of the lamb on the doorpost so when the death angel passed over, they would be forgiven. The lamb that brought deliverance from Egypt, the lamb Jesus pictures that lamb that brought freedom from oppression, that lamb that rescued them from their afflictions. Isaiah also in verse uh, 7 in, in chapter 53 
Isaiah also looks forward to the Lamb of God in the New Testament. The Lamb whose death would deliver those who believe. The Lamb whose blood would cleanse us from our sins. The Lamb that John the Baptist wrote about, and he was the forerunner to bring a message uh, reminding people there is somebody coming who's greater than I, whose shoes I'm not even worthy to stoop down and unloose. This one that Jesus, uh, that, that John spoke about was Jesus. And he said in John chapter 1, verse 29, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. This is that Lamb. Are you moved today by the silence of the Lamb? Are you moved today by the character of Christ and His love for you and His sacrifice that He made for you? Dear friend, I want to encourage you today. If you don't know Christ, if you don't know Christ, I want to I want to ask you to come in faith to the oppressed one, to the afflicted one who gave His all on the cross so that you can have forgiveness of sins. The silent Savior invites you today. Can you see the Savior today as He invites you to trust Him and be free? There's so many people right now looking for peace. There's so many people longing for peace. And there's so many people that are recognizing now for the first time probably that the things of this world do not offer peace. Jesus came to give you peace. Jesus came to offer peace and He came to be your peace. And you've got to receive that today. God has provided a way. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No man comes to the Father but by me because He wants us to be with Him. He states in His Word that He doesn't want any to perish, but all to come to repentance. His desire, God's desire, Jesus' desire, the Holy Spirit's desire, and my desire for you is that you would spend eternity with Him. Through Jesus, truly, God has provided the way to escape our sin. All we, the Bible says, like sheep have gone astray. But the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. You see, it's simple. You must uh, come to the place where you admit you're a sinner. You must believe that Jesus loved you and he died to save you. And you must confess Jesus Christ today. Somebody said, what's so good about Good Friday? Well, I can tell you this. Jesus, who was just, gave his life for the unjust so that we might become the righteousness of God in Him so that He could give us forgiveness of sin. If somebody had to die uh, who was not even guilty, if an innocent man had to bleed and die on a cross on Good Friday, somebody said, what's so good about that? Not much for Him, but a whole lot for me and you. Today, it's as simple as admit, believe, and confess. And maybe for you, as I look into this camera and you listen to my voice, for this next minute, maybe you're one that could say, Pastor Brian, I've never received Jesus as my Savior. I want to invite you to bow right there where you're at. And I'm going to lead you in a prayer. My prayer won't save you, but your faith in Jesus Christ today would save you and make you whole. Would you pray with me today in your heart for the first time? Heavenly Father, I have sinned against you. I want forgiveness today all of my sins. I believe Jesus died on the cross for me and rose again. Father, I give you my life today to do with as you wish. I want Jesus Christ to come into my life and into my heart. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to say thank you so much for tuning in today. If you trusted Christ as your Savior, We'd like for you to reach out to us for more information on being a Christian. We're excited for the decision you made today. And you can truly say this is a good Friday for you if you trust in Christ. You can text me at 678-492-3611. Or you can email us 
at info at lakelandbaptist.church. To all you who are believers in Christ, we're, we're celebrating with you on this Good Friday. It's a Good Friday not because Jesus died, but it's a Good Friday because we've been forgiven. I want to encourage you to celebrate the Good Friday and uh, con continue to communicate uh, Christ to your family, to your friends. Um, his silence uh, proved his great character in the face of adversity, and his silence uh, proved his love for us and his willingness for him to go to the cross for us. And now, since we've been born again, we shouldn't remain silent. We should speak out for Christ. So I wanna encourage you, if, if you've received Christ, uh, be a witness for him, be a light for him, uh, love others, and treat others the way you want to be treated and show kindness and compassion and reach out and do acts of kindness now and, and love people to Christ and tell them about Jesus and uh, have a sweet spirit about you. Be filled with the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit. And uh, I want to remind you to check us out for uh, Easter Sunday services right here at LakelandBaptist.Church. Um, we'll have our services online for you. And we're so thankful that you chose to uh, connect with us online today for Good Friday online. Hope you have a great uh, rest of the day, uh, rest of the weekend. We're praying for you. We're praying with you. And we're believing God to do great things in these uh, uncertain times. God bless you. Hey, I want to invite you also to uh, check out this last song before you close the uh, video out. This last song is called Living Hope. Listen to it and worship the Lord. my 